Greetings and welcome to today's session of a case study of building envelope design. Today I am going to talk about uh, the Hand in Hand Academy for Social Entrepreneurship which is located in Kanchipuram and built in 2015. This is a project that effectively combines sensitive architectural design with very efficient building envelope design which ensures that the internal spaces are cool and comfortable without the excessive use of mechanical conditioning. This is built for a, an NGO called Hand in Hand uh, who is, uh, has an international base with the headquartered in Kanchipuram. A little bit about our firm before I move on. Our firm Green Evolution focuses on holistic sustainable design and construction where we effectively combine sensitive and thoughtful architecture with efficient design of systems and other engineering uh, to ensure that the building is holistically sustainable and is built in harmony with the natural environment. And uh, this also ensures that uh, you know, we mitigate the harmful effects on the environment uh, because of the extensively uh, polluted construction industry that is happening today. The speakers for today um, is myself. Anupama, I am an architect with a passion for environmental design and construction. Along with me, Jaydeep Vivekanand, who is our expert in green technologies and systems. So he will be talking um, a little more about the green systems and the technology measures that we have used in the project. Moving on, I um, will brief you on the project summary first. Um, this is an 18,000 square feet building built um, across three floors, it is a G plus 2 construction, mostly designed as a naturally ventilated structure. Some of the spaces like there is an auditorium and there are training halls uh, which needed uh, conditioning uh, in case of you know excessive heat during summers. Uh, the building caters to uh, providing uh, courses for uh, social entrepreneurship for an international clientele. I'm going to start with the design and planning of the facility. Initially, we were provided a design brief, uh, which we again, you know, evolved along with the client. Uh, hand in hand, as I told you, is an NGO with a focus on rural upliftment. But they wanted to bring their experience of uh, rural initiatives from the social aspects into the international uh, uh, you know, uh, field and they wanted to uh, provide a platform where they can actually train people uh, who are budding social entrepreneurs. It was very important that this facility had to reflect the international presence of hand in hand as well as it has to be rooted in the local cultural context where it is located. One of the other design briefs is uh, the facility had definitely to be environmentally sustainable which is very much inconsistent with hand in hand sustainability initiatives. And of course, uh, last but not the least, uh, can we design a facility uh, which is cost effective and not extravagant considering the client is an NGO and uh, the building is to be built purely out of donation uh, funding. So with this, um, this, this is the overall design brief for the project and just to elaborate a little bit on the sustainability initiatives, uh, we looked at definitely energy efficiency um, and water efficiency, how we can harvest 100% of the rainwater, sensitive material use which also leads to cost reduction. Good indoor environment of course was the most important uh, factor uh, that had to be a result of uh, the uh, design and management. Um, which included access to abundant light and ventilation and also low emitting finishes inside. Moving on to the location, um, as you see in the map, this is located in Tamil Nadu. It's a two hour drive from Chennai. The town is Kanchipuram. It's almost a rural setting. Kanchipuram is known for its very, very rich history and its cultural heritage in terms of the temples, monuments and its weaving which is uh, uh, silk saris are very popular from here. Uh, the climate zone is warm and humid. So um, considering this the cultural context became very important and uh, we had to make sure that the design had to have a strong sense of identity um, 
and also uh, create a cultural flavor for the international audience to which it would cater to ultimately. So how did we do that? Um, one thing was, um, if you see here, uh, the, there is a logo, uh, the building logo that has been cut into stone walls and that's used as a landscaping wall. This is a view of the entrance that you're looking at uh, straight. Um, and this logo provided a so strong sense of identity for the people who are employed there. Also a facade tile pattern was created where we actually custom designed tiles and the design of the tiles represents the one of the weaving patterns used by the local weaving community there. Sloped roofs were created uh, and the sloped roofs helped in you know, mimicking the existing uh, rural aesthetics as well as sloped roofs provide um, you know, a better uh, heat reduction on the internal spaces. Picture on the left you see there is a satellite image of the facility as it is today. So when we first saw this site, uh, the site layout, uh, it's a very linear site, it's a 1.5 acre site um, set in a rectilinear fashion as you see here. Uh, so the first step was in a linear site like this, how do we get the full effect of the site? You know, it was very important for us then to ensure a direct line of sight uh, that goes all the way from the front to the back. And it was important to have this not only as a visual access, but also a physical access. Only this will help uh, people experience the full extent of the site. Also, if you look at the, you know, there's a breezeway, the site is oriented uh, with uh, south to the right. Uh, the access, main access is from the west, so the front facade of the building will face west. Uh, the breezeway, the main prevailing wind direction is from the south, which is from the right. Um, and a few of the uh, features that were determined because of the shape of the site uh, included, like I said, the linearity of the uh, voids that we had to create and also we need to trap, needed to trap the prevailing breeze from the south. And so it was very important to provide open spaces uh, adequately to trap these breezes. A curved form, if you look at this, the buildings are all curved. Uh, if you look at the first part of the uh, structure, that is the academic block. And this curved form, what happens is it actually cuts, um, you know, the uh, direct heat gain from straight forms. So a curved form will reduce your heat gain into the building because it diffuses the heat. Um, so this was, you know, already facing west, it was important to try and negate the heat from a direct west facing wall. So the curved form helped that. Um, also one more thing about the curved form is it also reduces the cost of construction. If you look at a perimeter of a curved surface versus a perimeter of a square surface for the same built up area, the perimeter of a curved surface is much less. So which means you use less material to build and uh, which directly leads to cost reduction. So that was one of the big aspects being an NGO that we looked at here. Uh, moving on a little bit into the spatial layout of the forms that I talked about earlier, like I said, the front part of the building is the academic block, which has training halls, it has a mini auditorium, library, administration. And um, the open space that we've created from south to north in the center of the site forms, uh, there is an OAT there for uh, outdoor seating and larger gatherings and also a rainwater percolation pond and a small temple which again reiterates the cultural context of the place right there. Uh, so this open space between the front academic block and you see the dining block at the back actually helps uh, you know trapping the wind and ventilating it, uh, keeping that breezeway open. Uh, behind this open breezeway uh, space is the dining block and uh, going further down uh, towards the east is the um, staff residences and housing which are yet to be built, that is in their future phase. This I want to talk, uh, today's presentation will talk more about the academic block and how our planning in the aca academic block ensured energy efficiency, all the measures that we have taken to ensure this. 
So let's take the academic block. This is a top view of the block. You see the roof forms. Um, this started with the circular form like I talked about, but we did not want to close the circular form. There is a split across the south to north direction and this is again to ensure the southern breeze goes cuts right through the uh, built environment there. Uh, the circular form again culminates in a central courtyard that you see, it's an open courtyard which, is, which can be used for gatherings, uh, you know, outdoor classrooms and of course we all know in the traditional design of a mutram or a courtyard in Tamil Nadu, courtyard is used for, uh, used to ventilate the hot air that is created because of the built form. So the central courtyard acts as a vent. And you see one more split in the form. Um, that is coming from the east, one more cut through the form from the east. Now that ensured that the eastern morning light falls into the courtyard and also you know the other parts of the uh, building get access to this eastern light. So when we looked at all of the splits and all you know, the central open space, what happened was the form was organically divided into four parts. Okay, so uh, the front portion. Um, here is the academic part uh, right here and uh, that is one part and then the form on the left, uh, the piece, you know, the pizza slice form on the left that was created is uh, the mini auditorium. On the right it is a library and um, the central space is a courtyard space which is an open courtyard. Couple of other pointers on this, uh, like I said again the curved surface minimizes the direct exposure to the heat. The roof forms again provide shading because it's a slope roof extended out. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more in detail about that later on. And um, also the slope form, um, you know, negates the heat, the impact of the heat that's caused on direct uh, flat surfaces. Moving on to some of the spaces that that is found inside this um, curved form. Um, so it's an effective combination of solid and voids that's being formed. Like I said, the front part is the academic and the training rooms uh, along with an entry a reception space that's right there. Um, and the lounge that's, uh, you know, above the reception halls. The rest of it is the training halls. The mini auditorium which is in two levels and the library and the toilets and the administration block towards the south. These are just some of the uh, pictures uh, showing what I talked about, how the split from the east actually causes a, you know, direct line of sight as well as brings in uh, eastern light inside. And this is a view of the facade uh, from the exterior. Uh, again, you see the split in the built form right there that lets in breezeways, that lets in light. And, um, you know, breaks up the built form. So this really effectively forms a good solid void uh, relationship. So that is the basis of you know how we uh, use the shape of the site uh, to ensure the building orientation and uh, you know is um, done sensibly and that will lead to energy efficiency and an effective uh, indoor environment for the users. Um, also one more thing to add is how the built form and the exterior or the natural site uh, is intermingled here. So people don't, you know, go into one space and stay trapped there indoors. They are able to come out, they are able to go out into the central courtyard or go through the cutouts, you know, go out, then come back in. So breakaway spaces is what we are trying to create here. Uh, and considering it is also, you know, designed for an international uh, facility, the idea of co combining uh, you know, contemporary design, uh, but yet retaining, you know, keeping a strong hold of the cultural context. If you notice, there's a Buddha statue in the courtyard, which again, you know, uh, brings you into, uh, roots you into the cultural context of the place and time that it is. So um, that is as far as the architectural design space planning is concerned. Moving on, uh, Jaydeep Vivekanand is going to talk about the energy efficiency aspects and how we evolved through the rest of the design to ensure the spaces are cool and comfortable. Yeah, so I'm going to ask Jaydeep to continue from here.